Once upon a time, it was back in the days when judges led Israel, there was a famine in the land. A man from Bethlehem in Judea left home to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The man's name was Emelech. His wife's name was Naomi. His sons were Malahon and Kilon, all Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judea. They all went to the country of Moab and settled there. Emelech died and Naomi was left, she and her two sons. The sons took Moabite wives. The name of the first was Oprah, the second Ruth. They lived there in Moab for the next 10 years, but then the two brothers, Malone and Kilon died. Now the woman was left without either her young men or her husband. One day she got herself together, she and her two daughters-in-law, to leave the country of Moab and set out for home. She had heard that Yahuwah had been pleased to visit his people and give them food, and so she started out from the place she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law with her on the road back to the land of Judea. After a short while on the road, Naomi told her two daughters-in-law, Go back, go home and live with your mothers, and may Yahuwah treat you as graciously as you treated your deceased husbands and me. May Yahuwah give each of you a new home and a new husband. She kissed them and they cried openly. They said, No, we're going on with you to your people. But Naomi was firm. Go back, my dear daughters. Why would you come with me? Do you suppose I still have sons in my womb? who can become your future husbands? Go back, dear daughters, on your way, please. I'm too old to get a husband. Why, even if I said there's still hope and this very night got a man and had sons, can you imagine being satisfied to wait until they were grown? Would you wait that long to get married again? No, dear daughters. This is a bitter pill for me to swallow, more bitter for me than for you. Yahuwah has dealt me a hard blow. Again, they cried openly. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth embraced her and held on. Naomi said, Look, your sister-in-law is going back home to live with her own people and gods. Go with her. But Ruth said, don't force me to leave you. Don't make me go home. Where you go, I go. And where you live, I live. Your people are my people. Your Elohim is my Elohim. Where you die, I'll die. And that's where I'll be buried. So help me, Yahuwah. Not even death itself is going to come between us. When Naomi saw that Ruth had her heart set on going with her, she gave in, and so the two of them traveled on together to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was soon buzzing. Is this really our Naomi? And after all this time? But she said, don't call me Naomi, call me bitter. The strong one has dealt me a bitter blow. I left here full of life and Yahuwah has brought me back with nothing but the clothes on my back. Why would you call me Naomi? Yahuwah certainly doesn't. The strong one ruined me. And so Naomi was back and Ruth the foreigner with her back from the country of Moab. They arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. It so happened that Naomi had a relative by marriage, a man prominent and rich, connected with Emelik's family. His name was Boaz. One day, Ruth, the Moab foreigner, said to Naomi, I'm going to work. I'm going out to glean among the sheaves, following after some harvester who will treat me kindly. Naomi said, go ahead, dear daughter. And so she set out. She went and started gleaning in the field, following in the wake of the harvesters. Eventually, she ended up in the part of the field owned by Boaz, her father-in-law, Emelech's relative. A little later, Boaz came out from Bethlehem, greeting his harvesters. 
Yahuwah be with you, they replied, and Yahuwah bless you. Boaz asked his young servant, who was foreman over the farm hands, Who is this young woman? Where did she come from? The foreman said, Why, that's the Moabite girl, the one who came with Naomi from the country of Moab. She asked permission. Let me glean, she said, and gather among the sheaves, following after your harvesters. She's been at it steady ever since, from early morning until now, without so much as a break. Then Boaz spoke to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, from now on, don't go to any other field to glean. Stay right here in this one, and stay close to my young women. Watch where they are harvesting, and follow them. And don't worry about a thing. I've given orders to my servants not to harass you. When you get thirsty, feel free to go and drink from the water buckets that the servants have filled. She dropped to her knees, then bowed her face to the ground. How does this happen that you should pick me out and treat me so kindly, me, a foreigner? Boaz answered her, I've heard all about you, heard about the way you treated your mother-in-law after the death of her husband, and how you left your father and mother and the land of your birth and have come to live among a bunch of total strangers. Yahuwah reward you well for what you've done and with a generous bonus besides from Yahuwah, to whom you've come seeking protection under his wings. She said, Oh, sir, such grace, such kindness, I don't deserve it. You've touched my heart, treated me like one of your own, and I don't even belong here. At the lunch break, Boaz said to her, Come over here, eat some bread, dip it in the wine, so she joined the harvesters. Boaz passed the roasted grain to her. She ate her fill and even had some left over. When she got up to go back to work, Boaz ordered his servants, let her glean where there's still plenty of grain on the ground. Make it easy for her. Better yet, pull some of the good stuff out and leave it for her to glean. Give her special treatment. Ruth gleaned in the field until evening when she threshed out what she had gathered. She ended up with nearly a full sack of barley. She gathered up her gleanings, went back to town and showed her mother-in-law the result of, the, of her day's work. She also gave her the leftovers from her lunch. Naomi asked her, so where did you glean today? Whose field? Yahuwah bless whoever it was who took such good care of you. Ruth told her mother-in-law, The man with whom I work today, his name is Boaz. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Why, Yahuwah bless that man. Yahuwah has quite walked out on us after all. He still loves us in bad times as well as good. Naomi went on, That man, Ruth, is one of our circle of covenant redeemers, a close relative of ours. Ruth the Moabitess said, Well, listen to this. He also told me, stick with my workers until my harvesting is finished. Naomi said to Ruth, That's wonderful, dear daughter. Do that. You'll be safe in the company of his young women. No danger now of being raped in some stranger's field. So Ruth did it. She stuck close to Boaz's young woman, gleaning in the field daily until both the harley, barley and wheat harvesting were finished. And she continued living with her mother-in-law.